we're here at St Endelian Hall in North Cornwall and we've come to see the remarkable work that is done in refurbishing and enlarging the hall. It's a lot bigger than the old one, but the original hasn't been demolished. It's been cleverly adapted to provide some marvellous new facilities. Let's go and have a look. I'm looking for Phil Tizard, who's been involved with this refurbishment from the very outset. Oh, hi, you must be Phil. Hello, Martin, yes. Hi. Nice to meet you. And Welcome you. to St. Indelian Hall. Thank you. Come in and have a look. Thanks very much. Oh, wow. This is a bit different from when I saw it last. I, th I should think it probably is. Where you're standing now is actually part of the old hall. It wasn't all knocked down. The hall was extended that way and the old part of the building has been redone to include the toilets, uh, to include the boiler room and an office, new kitchen and a bar space as well. And we're particularly pleased with the kitchen, which is a bit like the cherry on the cake. It's still in the same place as it used to be. It's all been refitted and it's been increased in size. Let's go and have a look. So this is the new kitchen. Same place, as I said, all new fittings, new hob, new extractor. During the year, there are several different uh, events going on, but the ones that have been going on for a long time are the Easter and the summer festivals, the music festivals. So we have to serve up to 200 people a day for teas and coffees. What we always used to do here was prop open the old wooden window with a broom. So now we've got this fancy window, which, gives us a servery. So of course we also have a shutter here because when rehearsals are going on in there we need to be able to serve teas out that way as well. Now we've, there's obviously as you can see an urn here. When we've got 200 people here that's not enough. We have to have two urns so we had to get a bit creative and we've eventually found this wonderful tap which means we can then Turn it on and fill two urns. Well, that saves endless buckets of water. Well, in the old days, um, we, we used to have a, a hose pipe from the tap, which actually was here, and feed it across. Health and safety. So now we're up within the, in the 21st century. So, as Very swish. <laughs> so we have here another shutter, similar to the one in the old part of the kitchen. But of course, uh, the extra thing we've got is the facility to go straight through from here into the main part of the hall without going through the kitchen. So there we are, and then we're back into the main hall. So that helps if you need to pop out and pick up a few glasses. Exactly. <laughs> so these are an innovation. It's a lovely view. It was a nice day. Tell us a bit about these, Phil. Well, this, of course, being part of the new build of the hall, gave us the opportunity to have these windows which gives tremendous light and as you say on the right on the right day uh, a nice view um, the old hall just had very small windows and trees and it was dark and dingy so i remember this <laughs> this is this is now wonderful through the windows of course we've got this now wonderful terrace which has only just been finished a bit blowy today yep. but around the edge there's going to be a fence for safety but also the one side of the fence is going to be able to be removed so you could actually have performances here and the audience out in the grass. Well on a day like today it'd be perfect for a production of The Tempest wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> We're now in the corridor to the toilets, but in fact, where we're standing now, we would have been in the ladies' toilets. <laughs> yep. We've, we've now got this lovely passage. Probably just worth pointing out, we've got this device here, these devices here, which are for uh, hanging pictures. Uh, we've got the same system in the, in the main hall because every festival, every music festival, since I think since it started in 1958, has had um, 
art exhibitions on. Oh, right. So th they've now invested in a proper system for hanging pictures in here and in the main hall for when, they're, when that's going ahead. The new ladies, which still incorporates some of the old outside wall. <laughs> and disabled toilet, of course. And so a useful addition we've got here is an office, which uh, might, it might be serving as a green room for concerts. Um, in the old days, we had to have a, hire a van for a week, and that was the office in the car park. Oh, right. So everything is just going upmarket here, and it's just going to be so wonderful when we can uh, use it properly. I'm jealous. <laughs> and last but not, not least is the storage facility, which of course we need for various bits and pieces, chairs, tables. Come and have a look. So tell us about your stairway to heaven, Phil. <laughs> well, I have to say a lot of the efforts that have gone into building this hall were other people's. Um, I've just been on the sort of periphery of the uh, development of the place. However, I was given the uh, task of finding and purchasing the PA equipment. And we've got the perfect storage facility up there. The only thing they didn't have was the staircase and that's where I came in. This is where my skills came into play. <laughs> They're not finished. So, project this sophisticated doesn't come cheap. Give us an idea where the money came from, Phil. No, it certainly doesn't come cheap. I, I believe the figure was something in the region of £400,000 to, to uh, improve the facilities and increase the size of the hall. Uh, the money came from all sorts of sources. Um, some of it was grant funded, uh, individual donations from uh, five pounds here, five pounds there, to uh, more significant sums, legacies, uh, the Arts Council, etc. Um, too many to mention, but uh, we got there in the end and it took about six years from when they first got the idea. Brilliant. So these are the old fixtures which have been removed from the ceiling to be replaced by these wonderful new tech lights which is going to be tremendous in here. So these are redundant now? Well, no they're not redundant. The hall is having new lighting as well, new tracks uh, so it's uh, suitable for performance. But these, several of these will be used as well to provide extra lighting there so they won't be going to waste. So Rupert, this is a revamp of a system that you had put in originally. Yeah. Uh, what's driving that? So the system was put in uh, about 12 years ago, um, and that was driven by both the priest at the time um, and the needs for the festival. Um, and the church has had, as you probably know, a long history of having music festivals here, but that's diversified and grown even more recently. Um, the number of roles that the church is, is put to has increased enormously. Um, and so the original system was a good system, it's quite flexible, but it's been adapted over the years, like all these things, and people have climbed up ladders and fiddled with things, and they've changed over the years. Um, and actually, we'd never relamped it. It was still the original, most of the original uh, AR111 halogen lamps were still in service. <clears throat> the revamp was driven by a need to make the system more flexible, to cater for a wider range of events that weren't just a full orchestra for the festival like they normally had. Um, down to smaller quartets, to book readings, to a whole range of things, folk bands. So we've changed the system, we've updated it, we've put in a new control system that's a bit more flexible that allows access to all the different circuits around the church rather than having to stick to a preset. Um, and we've updated the dimmers, keeping the same physical uh, casing and wiring, but all the electronics are new. 
so they're a bit more efficient and they're much quieter. One of the plagues of the old system was that it made a filthy noise when it was dimming. As you probably remember, old dimmers always used to rattle. Um, so now, when you turn the lights down, the church stays quiet, which is really nice. The, the big advantage of the moving heads is that you can control them from ground level uh, and record a preset position and then recall it from the handset. So if a soloist is going to be there or over there or over there, you can set it up beforehand, hit the button, and all the lights will just jump to the location without having to get a ladder out or a tower. <laughs>